what is going on Guardians and welcome back to another Destiny gameplay video. In this video I'm going to show you some clips that sort of showcase uh, how important it is to rotate the map and how to rotate the map in a way that best suits your play style and, um, and just exactly what that's going to do for you. I know a lot of people have play styles that can be a little bit more stagnant, a little bit more campy and uh, they'll tend to try and hold down a position but uh, in something like skirmish or salvage uh, that really doesn't work and so if you're trying to get into a little bit more of the competitive 3v3 or in general you just want to be more successful when you play the 3v3 playlist then you're going to have to understand how to do map rotation now in the six versus six playlist it um map rotation can be important but there's so many other wild card factors in 6v6 that it's really not going to make a huge difference, especially if you're playing control, and the whole point is to hold down two spots on the map, then uh, it's not going to play that much of a factor. But in threes, it's huge, and uh, it's definitely going to help you out if you're ever like in a scrimmage or something like that against some of your friends. So I'm going to go over some of my uh, basic tips for this. But before I do, I gotta show you this clip. This is how one of my matches last night ended. It's probably the most clutch ending to a match I've ever played. This guy pops Blade Dancer. Now you'll notice in the lower right that the score is pretty much tied up. Next kill wins. And so it's like, everything's on the line. Gotta make it happen. It's do or die. And uh, I get the no scope out of the air. I just sit and wait and sucker him in. And then take the no scope shot at just the last second like when he's right there and uh, as he's doing it in that moment I'm thinking here we go again <laughs> second time in a week and uh, made it happen made the clutch happen it felt pretty hardcore he was honestly a really good player he had some pretty dirty snipes on me but um, that felt really good to wrap it up that way now in terms of map rotation there's really two major things I want to hit the first is that you kind of want to think about it like peeling a banana, so to speak. Usually, I don't know about you, but when I peel a banana, this, this seems like a really ridiculous uh, analogy, but when I peel a banana, uh, usually it takes like three peels, right? I grab a corner, I pull one edge down, pull a second edge down, and pull the third edge down, and then you got your delicious banana. I know you guys are like, lol, what? But that's kind of like what threes is like. As you move around the map in a sort of arcing, uh, you know, rotation, as you isolate players, you're gonna pick one down, and it's like peeling a banana. You get the one pick. Now you want that, you want that goodness inside. So you push up, you get the second pick, and um, and then once you get two down, you're gonna basically all bum rush the last guy, so that you can get the team wipe. And map rotation, what it does is once you get you know all three down once you get into that juicy goodness for that team why what happens is that because you're moving around the map the spawn system is going to be a little bit more confused and confuzzled in how it selects where to place your opponents so you're basically gonna force split spawns um, and in that gameplay there you saw us get a team wipe as we moved around the map and pinched guys in between us that guy did sh shut us down with that super by the way right here important thing if there's an orb down near a special box, make sure you wait until your your teammate is picked up before you pop that special box. Sort of just a courtesy. A lot of guys will prioritize special and then go for the revive. And you're sitting there like, no! Here we're rotating around the, around the map. Get one, get two, we're peeling the banana. On the last guy, uh, I get smoked. He takes me out, but my teammates are able to finish the last guy, 2v1. So we get the team wipe. Now, another really important factor is sort of the route that you take as you rotate, and it really depends on what your special weapon is. So for me, I tend to use a sniper rifle, so notice that as I'm doing my arcing pattern around the map, making my rotation, I'm sticking to the outside lanes and looking in. That's very, very intentional. That's on purpose. If you were to use a shotgun in your special weapon slot, shotgunners, you are honestly going to want to rotate around the map in in the sort of inner rings not necessarily dead in the middle of the map but sort of like if you're looking at a bullseye you're gonna look at ring two as opposed to ring three so uh, that's sort of you know the routes that you're gonna want to take and if you have a fusion rifle you're probably gonna want to stick to ring two as well and most maps sort of have these these avenues of traffic and depending on what you have you're gonna want to be very intentional about the way that you move around the map and like I said, that's going to help for split spawns so that you can group up on uh, your opponents. So 
one of the things that you'll see a lot of competitive players do when they win matches is that they'll chain split spawn kills. So basically, as they get a team wipe, then they're going to be fanned out enough that it's going to divide up the, um, the enemy team. And when you see someone that's isolated, you all push to that one and kill that person, right? And then, as you do that, the other two teammates are probably going to be moving together or trying to find a way to get to you. But then that means that the person you just killed is going to get split spawn. So now it's a 3v2. And if you get one or two picks, then it, it basically you string together a series of kills where you outnumber the enemy. And it's all because you have map control forcing split spawns. So let me give you a visual here. This is Firebase Delphi. Now, how you're going to move around this map depends on what you've got equipped. For example, if I am using a sniper rifle, there are some sight lines that favor that. So, you're going to want to look from like the dome into horseshoe or from the A spawn. You can see into uh, that tip of the horseshoe. You can look up into B. Uh, there are just a lot of nice sight lines for, you know, if you're a sniper. So, rotate according to the, the sight lines that favor that. If you're using a shoddy, you just want to stick to the inner ring. There are a couple of areas sort of in the middle of the map where shotguns are most effective. And you want to utilize that. Make sure that you're positioning yourself well. Cauldron makes for a good example as well. Here's Cauldron. Now, the left side is cliff side. If I'm a sniper, I can use cliff side to, to you know, side on more than half of the map. And then if you get into the inside heavy room, you can look up into some of the spawn areas as well. Now, if you're using a shotgun, here's some of the areas you're going to want to stick to. It's the inner rings, okay? And that's where they're most effective, especially if you're using some mobility perks. Um, you know, you can be really, really effective if you're coupling it with firebolt grenades. Um, whether you think it's cheesy or not, it's definitely super effective. So those are just some of the sight lines you're going to want to stick to. So make sure you're thinking about the map itself, what the sight lines are, and leverage those things to your advantage depending on what you've got equipped. So I tend to stick to the outer rings using a sniper, not all the way on the outside, sometimes I'll, I'll venture into the inside. But see here as we move around the map, I came around the flank and then that let us pick these guys apart as a team because we sort of coordinated our pushes with a couple of my teammates using shotguns. So they stuck to the inner ring and I came around on the flank and it made for an easy wipe. And then while we're there, we can grab the special ammo that's in that spawn and sort of get back to mid-map control while they're all respawning and sort of grouping up. So that's what map rotation is going to do for you. It's just going to give you so much more control over the pace of the game. And so yeah, sometimes you're going to go up against an enemy team that's got really good map control as well. And they're going to be rotating it as well. And it's going to keep you on your toes and it's going to put, uh, you know give you a good challenge. So if you're playing in a full fire team, it's so much easier to coordinate when people are doing that. But otherwise, if you're playing solo, it's, it's significantly more difficult when you're going up against a team that has good map control. And honestly, uh, what I would tell you to do in that instance, if you're playing solo, I would just say stick with your teammates. Now, they may go to some sidelines that don't favor uh, your you know, favored special weapon. So you have a couple of options. You can either um, change what you're using, or you can just sort of force yourself to try and adapt to those sight lines and that may be a little bit tough but honestly even if you're using a sniper rifle in the inner portions of the map you can still use it really effectively it may not be the best option it may not be the the position on the map where it's most effective but special weapons are effective anywhere you can make them effective anywhere mainly because of how mobile destiny allows you to be so just because you can get around very well and get jukes and all that sort of stuff and uh, you can get quick scopes and those sorts of shots on a sniper rifle, you can still be effective in close range. So I hope this has been helpful. Hopefully those diagrams are good for you. I'll catch you in the crucible.